Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of All About the Cars of Gran Turismo 7. In this video we are going to learn all about the legendary vehicle, the Jaguar XJ13 from 1966. I do want to mention that this car can only be purchased at the legendary dealership and it's also one of the three cars that you need to purchase in order to achieve the three legendary cars achievement or trophy depending on which system you're playing on. The other two that you need to acquire are the Ford Mark IV race car and the Ferrari 330 P4 race car. So those three cars will get you the three legendary cars trophy for this game. So we're going to click on this car here and learn all about it. Here are all the statistics off to the right. It comes stock with 695 performance points. It's an MR drivetrain, meaning that the engine is placed in the middle of the car and the rear wheels drive the car. There's 510 horsepower at 7,500 RPM and the weight is 2,200 pounds and the engine is naturally aspirated. In order to purchase this car, you'll need 12 million credits. Now we're going to click on learn more and see what McKeel has to say. Jaguar played a huge part in the history of the 24 hours of Le Mans. Winning this famous race five times in the 1950s with the C-Type and the D-Type. However, Jaguar withdrew from competition at Le Mans after 1956 and didn't show interest in racing again until the 1960s. But development of a sports car to succeed the D-Type had been secretly underway. That successor of the D-Type is the car you see before you, the XJ-13 with a midship mounted V-12. But unfortunately, this XJ-13 never made it to Le Mans. By the time the car was ready, management's priorities had changed again. We can only imagine what might have happened had Jaguar been a part of the legendary Ford Ferrari tussle at the 67 Le Mans. All right, that's everything we can learn about it from the legendary dealership. So now we're going to back out. And I do own this car, so we're going to go to the garage and go to J for Jaguar <coughs> excuse me and we're gonna go right here to the XJ 13 and I'll click on it and we can listen to the startup sound All right, now we're going to go to the car collection and go to this car and read the short description that Gran Turismo has written about it. A dream car that never came to be, this beautiful V12 mid-engine race car disappeared. When it comes to racing, there may not be any other marquee around with a richer histor historical heritage than Jaguar. Back in the day, Jaguar won the 24 Hours of Le Mans from 1955 to 1957 with a now legendary D-Type, taking the checker three years in a row. The company's activity as a works team ended in 1956, but there were those within the company that still had a passion for racing. These men continued to develop racing cars, and one in particular was intended to succeed the D-Type. This car was dubbed the XJ-13 and was completed in 1966. It was Jaguar's first mid-engine race car. The body was similar to the road-going E-Type, often considered one of the most beautiful road cars in history. However, within the engine compartment sat a 5.0 liter DOHC V12 that pumped out 495.1 horsepower. This engine would serve as the basis for the company's 12-cylinder engines for years to come. The engineers had high hopes for the XJ-13 in actual competition, but the management team at Jaguar wasn't keen on seeing it race. And along with the fact that company brass wanted to keep the V12 engine a secret, the XJ-13 project was canceled. It's too bad, really, because the car was said to be the most beautiful in Jaguar's history. Although it never made it onto any racetrack, one car was actually produced, but it was severely damaged during filming of a promotional clip for the E-Type. Since then, the car has fortunately been restored to its original splendor. So that's just about everything that we can learn about the Jaguar XJ13. So now what we're going to do is back out to the main menu 
and we're going to go down to the tuning shop, see what we can do to this car. Now, I have already tuned this car. Uh, there is not a whole lot that you can do to it because it really it is a race car and it came with most of these parts already on it. So uh, not much you can do with the sports under club sports. Again, not a whole lot. Uh, you can add a racing crankshaft and a fully customizable computer and superchargers to it, as long as customizable transmissions. Um, but that is pretty much it. There's a, you know, you can do suspension, um, but really not a whole lot that you can add to it. So a couple of little tweaks here and there to raise the performance points, uh, by adding some of these parts that are available on the car. But really, you can only get it to a little bit above 700 performance points. Uh, still a really cool car, and uh, it's a really expensive car, but it's a historical wonder in the automotive industry. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope it helps you to determine whether or not you'd like to add the Jaguar XJ13 to your collection. Um, if, if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe, and we will see you next time. Stay tuned for more editions of All About the Cars of Gran Turismo 7.